How do you even become a professional engineer in Canada? What are the requirements? What is the process like? What if you get rejected? Why even become a PNG in the first place? Well, in this video, I'm basically going to answer all of these questions because as a fifth year mechanical engineering student myself, I was really curious as to exactly how do you become a professional engineer. That being said, if you yourself are an EIT or even a PNG, please feel free to share your experiences and chime in in the comments. For this video, I'll be speaking on how the process works in Alberta. So if you're in a different province or you're just applying for a different province, be sure to look at the nuances, the differences as to what the process is like there in comparison to the Alberta standard. But first question to ask is why even become a PNG in the first place? Well, in Canada, in order to call yourself an engineer, you can't can't just call yourself an engineer even if you graduate with an engineering degree you need to get your png so those with a png are those that are registered with their provincial or territorial professional association in alberta it is a pega so if you have a PNG, you are a professional engineer under a PEGA. Now, being a PNG comes with a lot of power and responsibility. And with that power and responsibility, you get usually higher pay and better job opportunities. Now, your first step is an obvious step, which is to get an engineering degree. And this engineering degree should be CEAB accredited. CEAB standing for the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. Basically, almost all of the engineering programs in Canada are accredited, but I'll leave a link in the description below just so you can check if your program is. For myself, I'm in mechanical engineering at the U of A, so it is an accredited program. Another thing to note on the academic side is to prepare your transcripts for when you do apply to become a PNG. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, what if I graduate with a non-CEAB engineering degree or even an international program engineering degree? Well, for those with a non-CEAB degree or an international degree, there will be a different process as to how you will be showing your academic experience to a PEGA. These are usually associated with exams. So if you are in one of these programs, you may have to take additional exams under a PEGA. Okay, congratulations, you got that degree. Now what? Well, it's time to work. Now, the work experience requirement to get a PNG is four years or 48 months of engineering work experience. Now, what's really cool, and this is especially targeted towards co-op students, so listen closely. This is directly from the University of Alberta. Pre-graduation co-op work experience can count for up to 12 months of the four-year experience requirement, which is pretty useful. But they also mention it is also important to realize that each case is dealt with on its own merits. So some graduates will get that 12 months credit, others will get less and perhaps significantly less. Now, a good tip that I got from all my colleagues and supervisors from my co-op experiences was to always track down your experience because that's gonna help significantly when you're going to start applying. Because maybe you don't remember what you did way back in your degree when you were working during your first co-op, second co-op. So it's good to note these down now while you still have the chance and then hold on to them until the future when you're ready to apply for your PNG. Now, to even streamline this process, you'll want to register as an EIT. An EIT is a member in training under a PEGA, EIT standing for engineer in training. Now, these are people that have filled out all those requirements to become a PNG, except that they don't have the work experience. So if you have that less than 48 months of work experience, you'll want to get your EIT designation. Being an EIT will help you get more familiarized with a PEGA while also helping you land some jobs. Now, a question that I had was, do you have to actually be an EIT to get your PNG? So what I did was I actually called a PEGA asking this question. And what actually shocked me was you don't actually have to be an EIT to get your PNG. It is not at all mandatory to have your EIT, which is kind of weird, but I guess good to know. Now, the next step is to fill out the PNG application. Now, this is good to know just so you know exactly what is expected of you for when you actually do go to apply. So once you go through those work experiences, you'll know in the back of your head, okay, I need to work on this more so that in the future, it's easier for me to apply for my PNG. But here are a few things that you need to prepare before you get started. 
you'll need proof of Canadian citizenship or PR status, a character declaration, which basically shows that you are of good character and show competency in written and spoken English. Now we'll quickly go over three forms. And the first one is a self-assessment form, which is not mandatory, but good to know. This form is the CSAW, which is spelled C-S-A-W also known as the Competency Self-Assessment Worksheet. This is basically a self-assessment to see if your work experience aligns with the competencies that a PEGA is expected of you. Now, in terms of fees, there are professional member application fees. You should expect to be paying about a few hundred bucks for a new member, it's around $500 for an application. These fees do depend on if you are a new member, if you are already a member of a PEGA, or if even you're another PNG from a different province and you're moving to Alberta and want to get your PNG. So it's a case by case. So just look at exactly what your status is and then you'll see the fees associated with that. But now it's time for the real forms. And there are two main forms that you'll have to fill out in this application, which is the WRVL, also known as WRVL, and the CBAT, or C-B-A-T. First off, the WRVL is the Work Record Validator List. And this is basically to show all of your experience time, so the duration of each one, and what you basically did in each of your experiences. Some basic things that you may show in your application are how did you incorporate design, design review, how did you apply engineering principles, or what was your role in testing or construction, things like that. Quick note, when reporting work experience, the gaps should not exceed seven years. Now, after the Wervel is the CBAT, which is the competency-based assessment tool. Now, a lot of people in the engineering community know these as the 22 competencies. The CBAT basically just captures your experience and competencies. I'll show all of the competencies in the screen, but it basically boils down to six categories, which are technical, communication, project and financial management, team effectiveness, professional accountability, and social, economic, environmental, and sustainability. You may just want to keep these categories in the back of your mind so you know exactly where you are lacking or where your strengths are for when you go to apply. Now, through these six categories and 22 competencies, they're basically just trying to see how well you can apply your theory. So how do you solve problems and what's your judgment like? And then on the other hand, they're also testing your practical experience. So what's your exposure to work sites like? Or how can you recognize limitations in designs? Stuff like that. Now, how exactly does APEGA validate your experiences and competencies? Well, these are done with two roles, two main characters, which are the validators and the references. Validators validates and scores each of the competencies. These are expected to be PNGs for a Canadian experience or an equivalent practitioner for non-Canadian experience. These are people who took technical responsibility for your technical work. You'll need at least three, and these can be managers, colleagues, supervisors, clients, so on and so forth. References are a bit more simple. They just confirm your duration and your position of employment. These can be a manager, an HR, or even a validator as well. You'll need one reference for each of your positions. Okay, that application process was a lot, but just to summarize, it comes down to the Wervel and the CBAT, where the Wervel basically confirms your employment duration and sees exactly what you did, where the CBAT tests your competencies through your experiences. You'll need validators and references, so you'll want to note down while you're in your work experience, exactly who you think could be a possible validator or reference for the future. Now it's time to write the exam, which is the National Professional Practice Exam, also known as the NPPE. This exam basically confirms your knowledge of professionalism, law, and ethics. This is a closed book exam and it has 110 multiple choice questions. So a quick tip is just to look out for those preparatory courses when you are planning to take the NPPE. Now, a weird thing about this exam, which makes it so special, is that it's only held five times a year. So you can't just take it whenever you want. So when you're ready to take the exam, you'll have to look out for the scheduling to see when the next exam could be. Now, based on my online research, there are mixed reviews about this exam. Some people say that it's pretty easy, while others were saying it's hard. After that, it's just time to submit your application and for it to be reviewed by a PEGA. Now, this can take up to 12 months and it's noted by a PEGA to just make sure that your contact info is all updated. 
just so that you don't miss anything from them and you don't get flagged for withdrawal. So what happens if your application is rejected? Well, this can happen for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that you have insufficient experience. So maybe you just didn't meet the four year experience requirement, or maybe you failed the NPPE, or you didn't have a great example for your competencies. But this is not the end because you can still reapply. You'll get that feedback from a PEGA. And then based on that, you can do a reassessment on the competencies that you failed, or you can actually get more experience and then do a request for update at some point in the future. But if you feel like you've been done dirty, you can also appeal the decision if you feel that your application was incorrectly assessed. Finally, although I've talked a lot about the PNG application process, be sure to reach out to those PNGs that maybe you have connections with, maybe they're a family member or someone that you know in your community. Be sure to reach out to them to see exactly what they wish they knew when they were going through their PNG application process and if they have any tips for you. It could just be the difference of you getting your PNG or not. So be sure to look out for that advice. So what did you guys think about the PNG application? Do you guys think it's fair? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe and to follow the podcast to learn more about what even is engineering. But till then, I'll see you next time. Peace.